Hello there, you're tuned in to 7 Edition with me, Amanda Ko. The headlines. Police to launch a special operation to nab individuals with warrant of arrest. 280 Malaysian students to be evacuated after state of emergency declared in Riau. UK Supreme Court says suspending parliament was unlawful. Preparations are underway to evacuate 280 Malaysian students in Riau, Indonesia, after a state of emergency was declared upon the air pollutant index, API, breaching the extremely hazardous level of 500 in the Indonesian province. In a statement today, the National Disaster Management Agency, NADMA, said that 160 students will be brought back to Malaysia, while 120 others will be evacuated to the Malaysia Hall in Jakarta in Java. Most of the students are in the cities of Pekanbaru and Jambi, which have been among the worst hit by smoke from forest fires raging in the province for the past few weeks. The announcement of the evacuation followed a meeting on the emergency situation in Riau held by Nadma, Wisma Putra, the Royal Malaysian Air Force, F RMF, RMAF and other related bodies. The state of emergency, which was declared yesterday, will be in effect until October 31st. Companies or individuals responsible for the transboundary haze will be subject to a penalty upon entering Malaysia. Finance Minister Lim Guan Ng said the move follows suggestions for a transboundary haze act to be introduced amid outrage by Malaysia and neighbouring countries being clouded by haze every year. So there was a suggestion that we uh, enact the transboundary haze regulation where I think uh, anyone who comes to Malaysia, if they are identified as one of the past deeds that caused the forest fires, then they will be subject to a penalty if they come to Malaysia, because you cannot go extraterritorial. So I think that is a suggestion that I think the government is looking at. Lim spoke to the media after launching the Medical Travel Market Intelligence Conference 2019 in Kuala Lumpur today. On September 19th, Energy, Science, Technology, Environment and Climate Change Minister Yeo Bi Yin said the ministry was awaiting the green light from Cabinet to draft the act. The Indonesian government reportedly sealed off plantations operated by at least 30 companies, including the four Malaysian ones, and brought criminal charges against four of them. Police will launch a special operation to hunt hundreds of individuals with warrant of arrest for commercial-related crimes, particularly fraud and cheating. Inspector General of Police Tan Sri Abdul Hamid Bador said these individuals from various professions, including doctors and lawyers, were involved in commercial crimes but escaped prosecution due to legal matters. Tapi sudah diadakan telah satu komiti khas untuk nak menyingkap, melihat balik semua kes-kes yang tersangkut ni tadi dan diaktifkan semula. Dan sedikit masa lagi, beberapa orang ya, yang menjadi subjek kepada warna tangkap ni akan ditangkap. Lah. Dan kes itu akan dibawa segera ke mahkamah. Untuk. Ada yang 4 tahun, 5 tahun, ya, sampaikan sehingga kan menimbulkan kemarahan mangsa-mangsa uh, ni tadi seolah-olah tidak ada. Seolah orang yang menipu ini kebal. Ya, kebal di sisi undang-undang dan seolah-olah pihak polis bersekongkol dengan dia. Sebenarnya dia tidak. He added that the committee is going through the list of the suspects before making the arrest and details of the operation will be announced soon. Tansri Abdul Hamid was met after a recording of the talk show program Soal Sirakyat at Sri Pantas today. Seven, six, five seconds, four.
Police today confirmed that a riot at a shopping mall in Kota Kinabalu, Sabah, was a fight between rival gangs and not a racially motivated clash as rumoured. State Police Commissioner Dr Omar Mama said officers responding to reports of the 6pm incident found no indication of racial motives in the altercation. Dr Omar said the incident was based on some misunderstanding. No, 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 no evidence of the police. Jangan kaitkan insiden ini hmm. dengan apa ni dengan dengan racial punya isu. Ya, nah, sebab <laughs> sekarang ini sekarang ini tidak terkesan kan sebarang maklumat yang menunjukkan bahawa insiden tersebut ada kaitan dengan apa ni perkauman. Tidak ada. He added, police are looking for the man known as Derek in connection with the brawl. The 40-year-old was said to have incited the brawl when he allegedly attacked another man and his friends using an iron knuckle duster. The victim suffered injuries on the face, head and body. It also triggered a mass brawl as others got involved. Police have recorded statements from the victims who admitted to knowing the suspect but were unsure why he acted violently. The case is being probed under the penal code for rioting. In Trunganu today, a woman pleaded not guilty at the Kuala Trunganu Sessions Court for killing her three-month-old baby. 27-year-old Nur Naji Hazul Kifli made the plea when the charge was read before Judge Azman Mustafa. She was charged with causing the death of her baby, Medina Sandra Muhammad Sadli, at a house in Shukai, Kemaman, on the 11th of this month. She was charged under the penal code, which provides for a jail term of up to 20 years and a fine upon conviction. The court set bail at 10,000 ringgit and fixed October 16th for re-mention of the case. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahdi Muhammad is expected to call for reforms at the 74th United Nations General Assembly, UNGA, in New York. Foreign Minister Dr. Saifuddin Abdullah said the Premier is also set to use the platform to further Malaysia's aspirations, including multilateralism. Kita menjangkakan pada kali ini yang amat berhormat Perdana Menteri akan menyentuh juga beberapa isu yang berkaitan dengan uh, kepentingan institusi-institusi dan undang-undang dan peraturan antarabangsa. Walaupun institusi dan peraturan ini tidaklah sempurna tetapi uh, tampaknya itu akan memporak-perandakan lagi dunia. Datuk Saifuddin said the Premier is also likely to highlight issues concerning Palestine and the Rohingya community. Tun Dr Mahathir, who arrived in New York City today, is scheduled to deliver his speech at the UNGA on Friday. His itinerary includes high-level meetings with nation leaders, events related to the Parallel Sustainable Development Goals Summit and other high-profile engagements. The 5G trials are to be expanded nationwide, with demonstration projects around the country set to begin next month. Communications and Multimedia Minister Gobin Singh Dio hopes Malaysia's early commitment to 5G will position the country to become a pioneer of the technology in the region. During a keynote address at the Mobile 360 Digital Societies event this morning, Gobin said that initially the 5G testbed demonstrations only involved five states, Selangor, Perak, Terengganu, Kuala Lumpur and Kedah. Yang pertama akan dilaksanakan pada bulan April yang lalu di Purwajaya dan Sanjaya. Ini telah pun diperluaskan ke seluruh negara. Projek-projek demonstrasi 5G di seluruh negara akan bermula pada bulan Oktober ini. Dengan pelbagai inisiatif yang sedang dijalankan ini, jurang digital boleh dikurangkan dan sekaligus menaikkan kehidupan rakyat Malaysia. The government is also increasing the availability and access to digital infrastructure, which forms the basis of the newly launched National Fiberization and Connectivity Plan, NFCP. Gobin pointed out that his ministry is undertaking a study for a national digital ID, which will help provide a reliable authentication system and an important enablement platform in the provision of trusted digital services. The initiative will help protect the personal data of consumers over online services at all times. 
Now on another matter, the Communications and Multimedia Ministry is awaiting the outcome of the Universal Postal Union's UPU Extraordinary Congress in Geneva to discuss the future of its remuneration system for inbound international letters and small packages. Gobin said he would not comment further on the matter as for now, the three-day Congress only ends this Thursday. I think there's uh, currently a meeting going on uh, where these issues are being discussed. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to comment on it until the meeting uh, is over. The, the meeting and I think, uh, there is a meeting on. So let us, uh, uh, what call, let that proceed first and then we will make comments after that. Because whatever it is I say now might complicate things or might impact on uh, the discussions. So I don't know what. He was commenting on the media reports that postal rates could be affected as the U.S. is, is, threatening, is threatening to end its 144 years' involvement in the international body that governs the exchange of mail and postal parcels between countries. The move is seen as an upshot from U.S. President Donald Trump's standoff with China in the ongoing trade war. Complaining that China's postal carriers aren't paying enough to have foreign shipments sent to the country. According to the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission, MCMC, two of its representatives were attending the Congress, which would review, which, which would review three proposals. The proposals are accelerating rate changes under the current methodology, allowing countries to self-declare their rates, and a convergence which blends the two. Meanwhile, following the UPU's Congress meet, all attention is on whether or not the United States of America will remain part of the UPU, with the eventual outcome having the potential to impact global parcel rates heading into peak season. Last year, the Trump administration gave notice that the U.S. intends to withdraw from the UPU by October 2019 unless substantial changes are made to the tariff structure in place. The UPU is the body responsible for setting rules and rates for international mail delivery. We're going to have a lot of... In other news, EPO Sessions Court today set five days, beginning November 11th, to hear the trial involving Perak State Executive Councillor Paul Yong Chu Kyung, who is charged with raping his Indonesian mate last July. Judge Norashima Khalid also fixed October 22nd as a case mention following a request by his counsel, Ram Karpal Singh. Meanwhile, in Malacca, a 22-year-old factory worker pleaded not guilty to raping a Form 1 student whom he met on the WeChat application two months ago. According to the charge sheet, the accused from Sagama Johor was charged with sexually assaulting the 13-year-old at a budget hotel in Kota Laksamana at about 8.30 p.m. on the 12th of this month. Police arrested three men aged between 25 and 27, believed to have been involved in a fight and setting fire to a house in Buntong, Ipo. It was reported that a 44-year-old woman died after witnessing a group of thugs vandalizing her son's car on Sunday night. Her home and four vehicles belonging to family members were also destroyed in a fire believed to have been caused by the same men. The three suspects are being investigated for causing death by negligence. We'll take a short break and when we come back, Greg Cliff's driver learns his lesson. Stay tuned. Welcome back. The UK Supreme Court has ruled that Prime Minister Boris Johnson's decision to suspend Parliament is unlawful. Johnson suspended Parliament for five weeks earlier this month, but the court said it was wrong to stop MPs carrying out duties in the run-up to Brexit on October 31st. This court has already concluded that the Prime Minister's advice to Her Majesty was unlawful, void and of no effect. This means that the order in council to which it led was also unlawful, void and of no effect and should be quashed. This means that when the Royal Commissioners walked into the House of Lords, it was as if they had walked in with a blank sheet of paper. Mr. Jeremy Lefroy. 
The UK Premier argued that he wanted to carry out the pro prorogation ahead of a Queen's speech so he could outline his government's new policies. However, critics said that he was trying to stop MPs from scrutinizing his Brexit plans. Singapore detained three Indonesian maids under, without trial under tough security laws over allegations that they donated funds to support Daesh. According to authorities, it is the latest case of allegedly radicalized foreign domestic helpers arrested in the city-state and the government said it highlighted the continued appeal of the extremist violent ideology. And India, Afiantari, age 33, Retno Hernayani, 36, and 31-year-old Trumini, who worked as maids for between 6 and 13 years in Singapore, had become acquainted around the time they were radicalized and developed a network of foreign contacts online who shared their pro daesh ideology. Officials did not say how much they contributed. The women are being held under the city-state's Internal Security Act, which allows for detention without trial for up to two years. After three months of huge pro-democracy protests in Hong Kong, its embattled leader Carrie Lam said on Tuesday that more than 20,000 people have applied to take part in a dialogue session with her and vent their anger at the government. While thousands have applied, just 150 people will be chosen at random to attend a two-hour session with Lam, and protest equipment such as umbrellas, helmets and gas masks will not be allowed. The initiative comes as the government's first attempt to reach out to the protesters since millions took to the streets to protest against an extradition bill now withdrawn that would allow convicts to be sent to mainland China for trial. Thursday's meeting would be an opportunity for people to have their voices heard. But some protesters said they were not interested as their demands are already clear. Despite the bill being withdrawn, the protests have snowballed into wider calls for democracy and police accountability in the semi-autonomous city. But police have repeatedly denied using excessive force and Lam insisted they had exercised restraint. Now, um, the police has been um, uh, undergoing a very difficult period, as uh, I hope some of you will realize. This is a very long, drawn-out process and um, filled with uncertainty and unpredictability. So sometimes you don't know when and where certain things will happen. Hong Kong has entered a 17th week of political unrest, which saw hundreds of rallies, some of which ended in violent clashes between police and protesters. More than 1,500 people have been arrested, the youngest aged 12. Now let's hop on to our daily segment, Clickbait, where we take a look at what's trending and making the rounds in the cyber world today. Now, irresponsible reckless driving is never a wise thing to do, whether it is because you are distracted, drunk, or simply a careless adrenaline junkie, you are putting your life and the lives of others, root, ro other road users in harm's way. But as much as some of us think it's common sense, some others are willing to take the risk. In this story, a video posted by a Twitter user shows a car careening wildly along the highway. Here's the story. The driver, who is allegedly drunk according to the Twitter post, was filmed and could visibly be seen driving wildly on the three-lane highway. Driving along the fast lane, he is seen overtaking a number of cars while occasionally swerving into the painted road lines. The driver even comes close to scraping into other cars. But the worst happened when the driver encountered a bend on the highway and was unable to control the car at speed. The driver then spun wildly out of control and ended up plunging into a ditch by the side of the highway. 
In a miraculous stroke of luck, nobody was hurt or killed in the accident. Despite that, the fact that this is a clear case of negligent responsibility where the driver is concerned cannot be discounted, as the accident could have been much worse. Netizens were quick to condemn the actions of the driver, many who are saying how incredibly irresponsible it is to be driving so recklessly. The video posted yesterday has garnered over 67,600 views ever since. Proton Holdings Berhad has unveiled its new logo with a fresh tagline, Inspiring Connections. Its chairman, Datuk Sri Syed Faisal Albar, said the brand Refresh was in line with its ambition to be a global and modern car maker. Uh, I think the, more importantly, what we need to understand is, is the values and the brand, the essence, uh, the core elements that comes uh, with with the logo change, now logo change is just not logo change. Yeah, I think every organization will go through a phase. Uh, the best of brands will go through a, a change uh, to keep up with times, uh, to keep up with the dynamics of the market. Nato Sri Syed Faisal said the move was reflective of Proton's evolution since it teamed up with Zhejiang Gili Holding Group in 2017. He said Proton's performance has since improved significantly with a double-digit growth, placing it in the second spot in terms of sales. The new logo is expected to be used on the upcoming X70 completely knockdown model, followed by the new launches in the future. Bursa Malaysia powered down losses at the close today, but market sentiment remained weak due to lack of positive catalyst. catalyst. The FBMKLCI inched down 0.6 of a point to 1,592.3 points amid renewed concerns of slowing global profit. On to stocks to watch. Burma's auto Burhad B Auto is poised to sustain its growing sales volume backed by attractive model lineup. The company also boasts a healthy balance sheet and high dividend yield of between 5 and 7 percent. Next, Gunting Burhad is said to be among a narrowed list of three potential bidders for an integrated casino resort in Osaka, Japan. The firm is likely to secure one of the three integrated resort licenses in Japan due to its commendable track record in Singapore and Malaysia. Last but not least, MMC Corporation Burhat's earnings are poised to grow by 75% and 6% for financial years 2019 and 2020 respectively. This will be driven by, among others, the recent tariff hike in most of the ports it owns and effective cost savings measurement. The rapid growth of e-commerce in Malaysia has seen some added benefits for a number of downstream industries, including delivery business. With every transaction made on online platforms, it's the delivery partners who work behind the scenes getting the parcels out from the sellers to the buyers. And in our Corporate King segment, we meet up with Ninja Van, a homegrown last-mile logistics company that is silently slicing its way to its success. Ninja Van currently covers the whole of Peninsula Malaysia. We asked its country head at Zim Halim what happens behind the scenes when a customer makes a purchase online. So with Ninja Van, we actually like to look at the process even before the parcel gets to our warehouse. So we integrate, often we integrate with our shippers and the system that they use so that as soon as an order, as soon as a customer purchases an item on our shippers platform, it could be your website, it could be their WhatsApp, it automatically creates an order, it pushes data to our system to create an order on our site. This will then automatically trigger a pickup driver in the area to go and pick up the parcel. As you, and from then on, the uh, pickup driver will arrive at the shipper's place, he will scan the parcel, bring it back to the warehouse, 
from which the warehouse will also scan the parcel and then it will go through our sorting system, it's a two-tier sort, which is extremely scalable with very strong systems underpinning it and then that will then make our way to the lorries at night which will then travel through the night to all the different states across Malaysia out for delivery on the next day. Adzim believes in decentralized empowerment where he gives opportunity to his team to make decisions but at the same time be critical of the decisions they make. Challenges and conflicts at work are unavoidable but what's important is I believe that you need to engage these challenges and conflicts head on. Uh, in Ninjavan, uh, we, uh, we utilize a lot of radical candor. So that's when you challenge very openly, well, as soon as you disagree about something, but you also care very deeply about someone. Uh, and so far it's worked quite well. Uh, I think the issues with challenges and conflicts comes when uh, staff or pe uh, employees are non-confrontational and prefer to internalize the challenge and the conflict, which then results into uh, deeper issues much later on. In April, Grab saw their potential and bought a stake in their business. Moving forward, Ninja Van has big dreams of helping other local businesses grow so that it can grow with them. I mean, the goal of Ninja Van was always to bring value uh, uh, and uh, value-added services to the small, medium businesses in Malaysia. So we look to offer a lot of additional services like uh, to improve the quality of logistics in Malaysia through the offering of our next day delivery service as well as to connect local businesses to the rest of Southeast Asia. The next time a ninja turns up at your door to deliver your parcel, just remember the silent hard work that went into building this local brand name.